I am so excited to announce our next speaker. Um, I want to announce Vishu Cook. I don't, I'm not excited just because she's from Lowe's and I work at Lowe's. I'm excited to announce Vishu because she is an amazing woman. She steps up and out constantly all the time to help anyone and everyone. She's passionate about seeing other women grow in their careers and you'll know if you just talk to her one time or even just hearing her speak today where her passion is. So super excited. She's going to talk to us on Get Unstuck, a framework to identify identify, acknowledge, and overcome self-limiting behaviors that are holding you back. She is a software engineer managing, engineering manager at Lowe's. She's responsible for delivering data intelligence and business insight solutions in the pricing, promotion, and competitive intelligence domain. She has over 20 years of IT experience. She earned her bachelor's degree in chemical engineering from Anna University in India and an MBA from UNCC and with a concentration in data scientists in data science, excuse me. She's currently pursuing her second master's um, in cybersecurity from UNCC. Vishu is passionate about women in leadership and loves learning new technologies. Welcome, welcome Vishu. Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Vishu Cook, and I'm waiting for the slides to come up. Um, so today, um, I'm. I'm here to um, talk about Unstuck. Um, this is a framework that I have um, that I've used uh, on myself. Um, this is a framework to identify, acknowledge, and uh, overcome self-limiting um, habits. Um, so just a little bit, I know uh, Tiffany gave a great introduction of me, but just want to give a little bit of uh, introduction. My name, uh, my name is Vishu Cook, and I'm a software engineering manager. I have about 20 uh, plus years of experience. Um, I'm very passionate about technology mentoring and women in leadership. Um, I love learning new things and sharing, so I have to admit that this is my first time presenting in front of such a big audience. Um, so I'll, I'll get caught up pretty soon. I have my folks here. Where are they? I told them if I pass out, they will come pick me. <laughs> so they're all ready, so I think I can go. And I've been married for 18 years, and I have two kids, uh, 15 and 11 years old. Um, I have a cult-like following. I'm a fitness enthusiast, and I have a cult-like following for Orange Theory. I don't know if any of you guys here, at least one person there. So um, just love uh, exercising. Um, so before I get started, I just wanted us to, I have a couple of scenarios I want to run by you guys. And I just, just show, your, show of hands, let me know if this has happened to you. So the first scenario is that there is a position that opened up in one of the departments where you have worked with somebody there. And this is a great position um, that you can apply for, you're qualified, and all you wanted to do is just ask for a recommendation from this person that you've built a relationship before. And um, when time comes, you're like, you know, something in your head, that chatter starts to happen where you're like, um, it would be good if Pam can recommend me but you know should I impose on her what if she says no then I would know that I'm not you know uh, suitable for that position and you don't end up applying for that position has this ever happened to anybody okay we have a couple of people and because these are all my experiences that have happened and the next one is have you guys been in a meeting and it's going on and you provide a opinion or a suggestion and somebody counters it, woman, man, doesn't matter. You stop in your tracks, the meeting is done, the interaction was only about a minute long, but then you end up ruminating over it. Why did I say that? I shouldn't have said that. You know, I think that now people think I'm stupid, people think I'm not capable. Has that chatter ever happened? Oh, a lot of hands, okay. So I'm not alone. The third scenario here is that, this is one of the favorites of mine, is that you see a job description for a position that you think you're perfect fit for. And then you go through the job description and you're like, okay, that's good, that's good. I have not worked on that one, uh, maybe that one. And then the rest of it is all good, but you still don't apply for that position. 
So you're like, maybe what if they asked me about the ones that I don't know? But I mean, they'll think I'm a fake. Has that ever happened to you guys? Okay, we have a good amount of people. So yes, if this has happened, this is a session for you guys. If not, then you guys have broken three of the 12 habits we're gonna be talking about today. So the background of this, how did I stumble upon this sort of framework? So I had taken up a job in 2019, very promising, great upward mobility. I was very excited about the job because delivery is my forte and this job required me to form a team and deliver on it. I took the job, great boss, everything was going fine, and then I started feeling very stuck. I felt there was no movement as such, and I thought that something was holding me back, but I was not able to put, put on paper as to what that was. And I started looking outside versus inside because I started feeling like people are not appreciating me for my contributions, and I felt that, um, um, people around me didn't quite understand what I'm capable of. Um, so I was going through this and I thought that, okay, I, I meet, again, I meet with really, really strong women and I'm like, okay, everybody's got it figured out, it's just me. So, that, so I, I just resigned to the thing until I was just scrolling through LinkedIn one time and then I came across a visual that had 12 habits um, that sort of the high-performing women who have used these habits to get them where they are today, all hard work, all of these habits, get them to a point, and then when they want to move up the ladder, these same habits tend to become limiting for them. So this got me interested, and I researched a little bit, and then I found that it was this book, How Women Rise. Has anybody read that book here? Okay, we got a couple of people. So this is an amazing book written by uh, Sally and Marshall. If you guys have read, read any business books, the, Marshall had written this book about uh, what got you here won't get you there. So this is sort of a female version of that because she partnered with Marshall to determine, like both of them have decades of experience mentoring and coaching women, and so they, they put this book together to identify a common 12 habits that these high achieving women have exhibited to get them there and then there is something that is stopping them. So I chose this framework as I was stuck, I chose this framework to help me get unstuck. So I was, I'm gonna share my experience here with you guys and so the agenda of today's meeting, we'll just go through um, sort of the 12 habits really uh, briefly. And as I'm going through these habits, it would be great if you guys can sort of jot down the uh, habits that is reflecting. I'll try to get through these slides as fast as I can because I wanted to set aside time for you guys to share your experiences. And if you're not, please come get me after the meeting, um, after, the, uh, after the speech, whatever. <laughs> And before I get started, I just want to make sure that um, I call a few things out. So, as I mentioned, these are not bad habits at all. These are habits that were very instrumental in getting you guys where you are today. So these are not bad. Why do we want to break these habits? Is because the next level that you're getting to is a different playing field, and it's different game. So for that, you need to be breaking these habits. So all of this is going to want you to get out of your comfort zone, just like me. Last year, this time, I had applied to speak in front of this, and I chickened out. So this year, I'm stepping out of my comfort zone to do that. So, um, so that, that would be sort of because you're breaking something away which was your second nature. Always, with any habit, when it's a second nature, it's difficult to break it. So you are going to feel uncomfortable. The last one is, the most important one, is you define what success is. So we heard a lot of great people speak is that success could be happiness at work. Success could be that high paying job that you wanted. Success could be that promotion. So you define what success is because you're gonna step out of your comfort zone so you need to be sure that what you define as success is what you're going for. 
So these 12 habits, I've broken them up into like four categories. Well, all of these habits do have an underlying belief as women, as, uh, as women we've had these uh, drilled in us in some fashion or form. The first one is that we've always been told that we have to be humble and uh, modest. So these three habits, I don't think you guys can see the text as such, but the first one is your reluctance to claim credit. So we are always very uncomfortable. We've always said my team did this and we did it together. There's never much of an I in the conversation. So we always feel very reluctant to claim our achievements. The second one is also similar lines, but it, from a different perspective, is where we feel like good work should speak for itself. So if my work speaks for itself, why do I want to speak for my achievements? And also I need people to spontaneously recognize me for the work that I've done. Because you guys know my work, so you should be able to speak for me versus me speaking for my own work. So that is another habit that we built up. And the last one is minimizing, is I have caught myself as well, is that whenever we are giving a suggestion, we use the word, this is just a small suggestion, or this is a minor thing. So we always, not only are uncomfortable sharing our uh, work, but when we do the sharing, we also minimize and say that, well, it wasn't that big. How many of you guys have got a compliment and there is not, you can stop with thank you, but we go on to say something more and say that, well, it wasn't that or it wasn't this. So thank you is a full statement. You can stop right there. So that is uh, the third one. And the next set of beliefs is that we are very, very quick to help others, but when we want to ask for help, as I was telling the scenario earlier where you wanted to ask Pam for help, we are very quick to uh, build those very, very strong relationships, but we never leverage those relationships. Personally, I've been at Lowe's for 11 years. Until recently, I have never reached out to somebody to say, hey, can you let me know if this is a great job to apply for, or I feel this is a good job I want to apply for. Never done that. And next one is failing to enlist allies. So how many of you guys have switched jobs where probably you take two weeks of break, but you end up reading everything about that job ahead of time so that from day one you guys are like, I'm going to be on top of things. So as women, what we do is we put our heads down, work really hard, learn everything we can do to the finer details so that we can deliver on the work. But what men do is they build relationships. They find out who do I need to talk to so that I can you know, build that relationship and network so that they can help me be successful. So that is another habit that women um, show. The other one is job versus career. So how many of you guys have given up a networking event because there was a delivery or something that needs to happen? We always prioritize our you know, work over our uh, career because another thing is also that you um, one of our, our CIOs yesterday made a presentation and it was very insightful she's a CIO of a fortune 50 company and she mentioned that when she was going to apply for a manager's position her manager had said that that might be a distraction for you and so she, she took that initiative to find ways to, you know, find another opportunity to become a manager. So sometimes we don't even take that initiative because we end up just focusing on our current work, just heads down, versus thinking, what should I do next? And networking is a very, very critical piece of that puzzle, actually. The third set of um, um, the th third set of uh, habits are largely because we want to be nice and agreeable. We also overvalue um, expertise. When Tiffany was giving my credentials, I have a chemical engineering degree, I have an MBA, and I'm doing my second master's, is because if I have to talk about something, I either need to have a certification or a degree in it. Because I felt, I always feel that, you know, if I don't know every aspect of it, people are not gonna respect me or I'm not gonna have. So this comes from the fact that we never had a seat at the table. So expertise was our ticket to get to the table. 
Now that we've got to the table, that habit hasn't gone. When we are at the table, we want to be the experts. But what happens is when you start moving to that next level, it is not sustainable because you can't be an expert in everything. And you should move from being the expert to hiring people who are experts who can help you deliver. So that is the other one. I don't need to talk a lot about perfection trap because I think Ebony needed a whole session on that. But while doing this exercise, I was looking at it, is that it looks like the beauty and cosmetic industry is about a half a trillion dollar business. So we have literally generated a industry for us to be per based off our need to be perfect. So. Um, that flows into our work as well, where we want to deliver everything to perfection, and that is again similar to your overvaluing expertise is not sustainable because we were talking about how you know agile we have to be and do minimum viable products. If we are going to do that perfection trap, my aha moment came in when my team, I was very, very, uh, I, since because of my perfection piece, I had to, my team was really struggling because everything had to be uh, on top of things. So one of them during my one-on-one -on -one had mentioned to me that, you know, this is not working out. So that was a real aha moment for me to feel like you being perfect is not just impacting you, it's impacting your team as well. And the next one is the desire to please. I have uh, so many times you sign up for stuff just because you don't want to say no. Just like how thank you is a sentence, no is also a sentence. You can absolutely say no. So we have this intention where we want to make sure that you know we are uh, showing as a team player, we are ready for that next promotion, but what is happening is that if you don't have goals, as we were talking about job versus career, if you don't have very clear goals, you don't know what to say yes to and what to say no. So if you have clear goals, what happens is that when somebody comes and approaches you saying, hey, there is a leadership conference that I need you to speak at, that is very much in line because you want to put yourself out there. But if they say, hey, there is a volunteer thing where you know I need you to do this paperwork, then you have to try to understand, okay, does that fit my you know path towards next level or whatever? So that those are that's it. The next set of um, um, habits is our extreme awareness as women. So we are very, very uh, aware, self-aware of ourselves all the time. So the first one we spoke about the uh, scenario in the meeting. This is similar to that: is that you are always reflecting. Rumination is something that we do a lot. And so reflecting, over-analyzing situations, and also reliving your fears. So for example, you know, you go present, and it didn't go the way it uh, didn't go. Then you start to ruminate, thinking, OK, I'm never going to do this. I shouldn't be doing this. This is not working out. So, um, so uh, rumination is one of those habits that we need to break as well. The other one is that also um, the um, we have a radar that is 24 by 7, 360 degrees, is that I've found myself when I'm in a meeting with my manager, I'm very, very keen as to am I saying the right things? Uh, because, you know, did I say something that is offending him or did I speak, uh, you know, with stuff that is complimentary to him? I've always felt that way. So it is basically that we have our radar all the time um, on very high alert. Um, that is another habit that we need to break. And um, the last one is um, how, the three things that we generally hear is that we share too much information, we talk too much, we show too much emotion. So all of these are like the too much piece of it. So it is basically like you, you're you can't, you know, you're doomed if you did, you, you're doomed if you don't kind of situation. So kind of being aware of that and managing that is another habit that we need to uh, break because we are hyper alert about, hey, did I come across as a little, you know, emotional here or not? Just be yourself because you're, somebody had mentioned about the true authentic self, that is what you have to bring to the, uh, bring to your work. So. 
So from a next steps perspective, I would say that reading that book is a great source. And what we have done is um, also when you read through this, as you are going through these uh, habits, some of them might have resonated with you. All of them, for me the first time, all of them resonated with me. But it's good to take one or two or categories that we were sp uh, talking about and then working on that. Um, that will really help because, I don't know, have you tried diet and exercise at the same time? It just never works. You have to pick one and just stick to that. And the other one is um, accountability partner. That is very, very important. It's like once you choose what you want to improve on, having somebody to be held accountable, for you to be, um, for them to hold you accountable is going to be very important. And or start a book club or a mentoring circle because we've done that at Lowe's and we have uh, got almost 50, 50 uh, folks signed up for it. So this is basically people reading the book, coming up with an action plan plan and being able to work together as a community of women to help each other. So that is another um, next step that you can do as well. So in recap, we had the humility and um, modesty, which was the reluctance to claim your achievements, expecting others to spontaneously recognize your uh, contributions and minimizing. And then we have, um, we like to help but not ask for help. You're building rather than leveraging relationships and failure to enlist uh, allies from day one and placing your job before your career. And the la other one is being, what was that? Uh, overvaluing expertise and perfection trap. This is where we are very, very self-aware of ourselves. And then the disease to please. The last one is extreme uh, self-awareness and be ruminating, letting your radar distract you and you know the too much in terms of emotions, words, and information. So that is the end of my presentation and this is my LinkedIn code if you guys want to connect with me uh, in LinkedIn. I'll be very glad to um, have, have a conversation.